lab 07 VPN tunneling lab part 1 in this lab we are going to complete test 1 to 6 Test 1, network uh, setup. Here we have a private network, the VPN client. It will set up a P2P connection to the VPN server and try to access the protected host V. For other ports, please uh, read carefully by yourself. Build images, bring up all containers to networks and four containers. So this is uh, different from this image. The image we have one, two, three, four, five containers, but this one is not described in uh, compose a file. But we have only four. I will work on this uh, first tab. Now let's open. Uh, three tabs to open a shell into these first three uh, containers. Okay, now let's uh, change this prompt so we can see the IP address clearly and the name of these computers. Here the VPN client will host you with this IP address and this host we with this IP address, the router with the two IP addresses. Excellent uh, prompt. So I will use a uh, host U with the IP address. This was the VPN uh, client. Working directory, I want to add a new line. Uh, 
Okay, now it looks like this. With a much uh, indicative. For this server, we have two interfaces. ETH0 to the auto network. ETH1 to the private network. So this is a server or the router. Right, this is a router or VPN server. Now the host uh, V. Okay, we set up this environment now. Host V, host U, the client, VPN client, set up a VPN tunnel to the VPN server and try to access this protected host V. In this lab, both uh, the TAN interface are created with the Python code. So now let's go through this level menu. The shared folder, the volumes, you can uh, see them from this uh, comp doc composer file. Right, the volumes is used as a VPN client, not by host one, and not by host two. Also used by the router. And the two networks. This one is used to simulate the public network. Let's call it a simulation uh, public network. And there is a private network used to protect the host V. Inside the volume folder, the template is uh, provided tunnel, tunnel.py. So we can add the code here. To save your time, the code in the lab menu are also put here. The template. So you can copy from here and paste in the source file. Packed sniffing, you can run TCP dump on containers. The interface dash n use number instead of name for popular services. And please pay attention, we want to be able to sniff the packets between other containers. So you can only uh, sniff packets going in and out of this container. Unless the con container uses the host mode, then it can sniff other containers' packets. You can check the composer file. None of these uh, containers use host mode.
right here, no host remote, no host remote, no host remote, no host remote. So which means they can only sniff the packs go in and out on each container itself. Suddenly we can run via shock or TCP dump on the virtual machine. You need to select what interface you want a wire shock to sniff on. And also you need to find out which uh, interface on the VM is corresponding to the interface inside the container. For example, on the virtual machine, the interface name for the network created by Docker starts with the BR dash and followed by the ID of the network. And uh, on containers, each interface name usually starts with the ETH, just as we saw in the router. There is an ETH0 and an ETH1. So you need to find out uh, what the uh, corresponding BR dash uh, well, and the idea of the network to find the corresponding uh, interface. It's not an easy uh, task. I put a link for you if you are interested in finding the corresponding name here. You can use this uh, script to find it. We need to complete these uh, testings. Ensure the lab environment is set up correctly. Hostio can communicate with VPN server. From Hostio, that is Hostio, the VPN server, you pin the VPN server. This is the IP address of one of the interfaces of the VPN server interfaced to the simulated uh, public network. Then see, we just send out two uh, pin requests. Right, two packets transmitted, two received. Test 2, VPN server can communicate with the host uh, V. Here is a VPN server or router. We can pin host V. Right, two uh, packets transmitted and two received. Host view should not be able to communicate with the uh, host V and now the environment uh, we set up use the private network to pro protect host V and uh, later we will set up the VPN tunnel then host you can communicate with the uh, host V but currently if there is no VPN tunnel host you should not be able to communicate with host V We can uh, pin from host uh, U to pin host V. Let us see it uh, does not work. So it's M up. Two packs transmitted but zero received. The last test run TCP on the router and sniff the traffic on each of the network. Show that you can capture uh, packets. On the router, we run TCP dump. First, we sniff on interface ETH0. Then, we can from host uh, U to pin 
throughout uh, two transmitter to receive uh, on the router side let me see from host uh, U to the server uh, as MP echo request then you get a reply from the server on the router to host you the second uh, pin request and the second uh, pin reply there are also some other packets ARP Now, if you want to sniff the packets in the private network, so we need to sniff on ETH1 because ETH1 is interfaced to the private network. You just type Ctrl C to stop it and change it to ETH1. Press Enter to run it. Now, from host uh, V, you can pin the server. So, this is the interface of the router interface to the private network. To transmit to received. Right. On the server you see from host V to the router request, then a reply sent from the router to host V. Second request and second reply again. There's an ARP PAX try to ask for the physical address of this IP. Okay, we see TCP dump can sniff both uh, networks, but only those uh, packets transfer into the order and out of the order, it can sniff. But uh, well, as we just discussed a moment ago, it cannot uh, be sniffed. For example, host uh, we to another private host that dot six dot six is another private host and the router will not be able to sniff this pin package right, from two Packs transmit and to received, but on the router you didn't see the other pin packets, right? Because the, these packets are not going to this uh, router or out of this router. It just go from dot file to dot six. Host we to another private host dot six. And now let's stop the TCP dump. Task two: create and configure the time interface. Here we will use the template tan.py provided. We can use the read and write system calls to receive packs from or send packs to the virtual interface. Create with the tan and tab interface. And the code is already included in the volumes folder in the zip file. And we just open it here the tan.py. Here it creates the tan interface, then 
get the interface name and uh, use the uh, while loop to keep the uh, program running because we know this virtual interface only exists during the time when the program is running once the program stopped the virtual interface will disappear task 2.a run it and check the name of the interface we should be able to see a interface called time zero now your job in this task is to change the time to pi program so instead of using time as the prefix of the interface name use your last name as the prefix the first five characters of your last name for example if your last name is smith you should use smith as the prefix if your last name is longer than five characters just use the first five characters and uh, show your result. So first let's run it to find the time zero interface. We are asked to run on host U on host U. That is host U. Go to the volume folder volumes folder you see the time.py make it uh, executable then run it press enter you see a uh, interface name time zero now it uh, keep running in that while loop infinite while loop so let's stop it can you see it stop it However, as we are asked to uh, find the time interface, how do we find it? But uh, now it keep running, so let's stop it and run it in background. I type uh, Ctrl Z, it stopped. And use jobs to see if it's stopped. Let's uh, delete, kill it. Combinated. It's gone now. Turn dot pi. Run in background. Interface name turn zero. Press enter. Okay, now it's uh, running in the background. This time we can uh, use IP ATDR to find the interface time zero. Uh, find the interface time zero here. Please record this output because later you are asked to compare with the time zero after it's uh, configured. Currently we didn't configure the time zero, we just uh, uh, created. You uh, didn't see IP address and, those, and it's not uh, up yet. And now let's uh, stop it. Its uh, job ID is one. Kill it. Terminate it. It's gone. Now you are asked to change the name from town to your last name. First file character. So here you see town is here inside this. Uh, Configuration struct. I change the time to last. Control S and save it. Save in the file. Okay, it's saved. Now we run it again. In the background, you see a last zero. So in your lab report, this must be your last name. The first five characters of your last last name is is a short. The last name is shorter, no longer than uh, five characters, just use it. For example, here just four characters. 
I use IP HDR to see this uh, version time interface less zero. Right, this is task 2.a. Now, task 2.b set up the time interface, give it an IP address, and bring it up. Because currently, the interface is still in down state. So, we need two commands. We can add these two commands in the time.py to make your life easier. And these two lines. Because these two lines, I think, is in the template. I didn't put it here. So let's type it uh, manually or copy and paste. Copy paste is not a good idea, but we, uh, let's have a try. If the error happens, then we go to fix it. Usually, those error is from invisible calculators you copied from the PDF file. So after you created this time interface, then you can uh, configure this uh, interface. And we paste here. Now you see it's given an IP address. Here is 53. Don't mess it up with the private network. That one is uh, 60 here. But uh, for this uh, virtual IP address is uh, 53. So its network is uh, 192.168.503.0 forward slash L24. This one gives the time interface an IP address. The second statement uh, print up app link set the device uh, up. The device is uh, less zero. You must use your last name. On the S, save it, it's saving. Okay, after running the two command uh, Browse, then run the IP address command again and report your observation. How is, is it different from that before running the configuration commands? As I discussed a moment ago, you need to record your previous output, then you can compare that output with this output side by side. Then first we need to uh, kill the running process, the running job, terminated, done, run one, run it again in the background, press enter and type AD, IP ADDR. Uh, this time you see this last zero, it's up, and it uh, got an IP address. So you need to compare this one with this one to show the differences. Right now, task 2.c read from the time interface whatever comes out from the time interface is an IP packet and we can cast the data received from the interface into a SCAPI IP object so we can print out each field of the IP packets and please use the following while loop to replace the one in the time.py. Use this one. And run it again on host U. 
and uh, configure the time interface accordingly. And then conduct the following experiments. And please describe your observation. First, you pin the host in the virtual in this network registry dot zero. Since this this one, the time interface is also inside this network, right? So we expect the IP packets will be printed out because they are in the same network. If we pin a host in the internal network, the private network, 60.0, for example, pin that host to B, does the time pi print out anything? We expect nothing will be printed out. Why? Why is that? Because those packets are not sent to the time zero interface. This one is not in the same, there are two different networks, unless we uh, set up a routing, right? Set up a routing rules. But currently, there is no routing rule set up yet. So now let's uh, change the code. Here is the part. Replace this while loop. And we paste it here. And Ctrl S, save it. Okay, now let's just run it on host U. Again, we need to kill the current one. Terminated, done. I already saved uh, that time dot pi when I modified that while loop here and control s double check saving files. And now it's saved. Press enter. Okay, now let's pin the host on the same network as this last zero. It's file three, right here, fifty three. Uh, we see two uh, packs are printed out. Uh, two uh, echo request. Because this dot file does not exist, so we receive uh, zero replies. And this is printed out by the tan.py, printed out by this one. But maybe you can make the career add something, for example here, you add a uh, the interface name Save it. So this way you will see a clearer result. You know it's printed out by your time dot pi. Okay, now let's uh, kill it and run it again. Why 
paint again and paint again right? and you see less zero less zero is printed out by your uh, time dot pi again we will not be able to receive a reply now the second uh, step we are asked to pin host uh, v Okay, this time, as we explained, the packets are transmitted, but they are not sent to the time interface. That's why time interface didn't get any uh, IP packets. So no printout, not just to transmit zero received, unless we set up a router to reload these packs and send them to the time interface then we will be able to see the output similar to this task 2.d write to the time interface in this task we will write to the time interface since this is a virtual network interface, whatever written to the interface by the application will appear in the kernel as an IP packet. Here we write an IP packet to that interface. Here it, uh, I think this statement is not strict uh, right. It says whatever, uh, whatever is written to the interface will appear in the kernel as an IP packet. How about I just write some random stuff? We will modify the time.py program. So after getting a packet from the time interface, we construct a new packet based on the received packet. And we then write the new packet to the time interface. And how the new packet is constructed is up to you. The code the following shows an example of how to write an IP packet to the time interface. Now we create a, a spoof packet, then write to the time interface. And modify the time.py code according to the following requirement. Here we have two requirements. First, after getting a packet from the time interface, if this packet is an SMP echo request packet, construct a corresponding echo reply packet and write it to the time interface. Please provide evidence to show that the code works as uh, expected. Second uh, requirement, instead of writing an IP packet to the interface, write some actual data to the interface and report your observation. Now here it says, based on the received packet. So first we need to receive a packet. Given that this uh, time interface in the rest where loop, it will read from the time interface. Then we construct one and write it out. So we can. Uh, construct a spoofed packet and uh, write it to the time interface following this part then uh, task to dot d write to the time interface and copy this one and paste it here Here, one, two, three, four. I have four empty space. One, two, three, four. 
So if you don't uh, use the same number of blank space in addition, you will get an indentation error. You may use a tab, it's up to you. Here I use a blank space. This IP we got from the time interface, then we send out a spoof packet using the time interface. And then write it out. When we write it out, how do we get it? We can use a TCP dump to sniff it, right? To sniff on this uh, time interface. So you may need to uh, sniff on your virtual machine or s open a new shell into this host uh, U to capture it or you run it in background but those output will uh, mess up so we need a way to distinguish between those outputs okay let's save it the uh, first requirement On the S, save it. Okay, here, let's kill the running job first. Now we need to construct our experiment. As I said, we need a proof to see the new packets provide evidence to show that the code works as is expected. So we run a TCP dump as background. But I think we, we need to create the time interface first, right? So we run this uh, time first. Here is, it also says this, uh, the requirement, if this packet is an SMP echo request packet, then construct a corresponding uh, echo reply and write it to the time interface. Here we didn't check its uh, SMP packet. How do we check it? Now we can use a code we used before in sniffing and spoofing. Sniffing and spoofing TCP attack. Here is a packet of sniffing and spoofing there. You can check the code. And uh, they are also inside the lecture part. Sniffing and spoofing using Scapy. Oh, here we have sniff, SMP spoof. And we can also use a sniff and spoof SMP. So we can use this uh, code. If SMP in the packet and the tag is a request, then we send back a reply. So we can use this uh, 
code and then here we have print out this can be used as evidence so we're gonna copy this code uh, this code this code is just a template to show you how to do it but we need to complete these two requirements right this is the first requirement this is the second requirement here it just shows an example so this is an example we can use now we use the code from this sniffing and spoofing part and I'll see copy it and come back here this one is a tem template so delete this one we don't use it the last line is used to write the code into this time interface so we keep the last line and then we paste the code here send out a spool pack packet spoof packet using the time interface here if the ICMP in the packet So we change this IP to PKT. Right, PKT. So if it's a SNP echo request package, we print out the information. Then we spoof an SNP echo reply package swap the source IP and destination IP and, and so on that was a sequence number the payload did a spoof packet then we send out the new pack the new uh, packet however this um, we use this uh, dot write instead of this send can I just save it ok it's saved first we read a packet from the time interface then we did check whether it's a uh, SMP request if so we spoofed a reply packet and send out and write it to the time interface maybe a better way uh, we can use this one use a sniff uh, function provided by scaping Okay, first let's just use this while loop to help try. So, in this way, we don't need the TCP dump because we will put the received packets and the spoofed packet. Okay, let's run. Just turn the pie first in the background. Here I have an error. Inconsistent user tabs and spaces in at attention. So you need to put your in attention uniformly. Now see stop it. Okay. The reason is when I tap this one, I use the tab key. So we need an empty space. Gonna save it. 
let us say which lines is in this line right line 32 okay, it's this line I think I saved it okay saving file no, run it again okay it's running that's zero now let's pin FC2 okay did you see what we get two transmitter two received which means a uh, spoof back is on the center back this is what we get right here it'll print out the summary then we print out the original package source package destination pack then we spoof the package swap the source and destination address this spoofed packet is a reply packet right? from this uh, non-existent host to our host uh, host you as a reply this is a second uh, pin request this is a second uh, spoofed packet to received they received two spoofed packet zero packs uh, lost and this is print out by the pin command this is also print out by the pin command so which means here we have a output from the pin command and our time dot pi so you know which one is from the pin here from the pin here from our time dot pi here is from the pin command the part from the time dot pi again this part is from the pin command Here we only print out a destination IP, then write it out. Again, if you want to make this uh, clearer, you can add add something in front of these uh, strings. For example, turn dot pi add it here then you know this sentence if a sentence prefixed with turn dot pi you know it's from our turn dot pi but it, it is also very clear right? sport package source ip destination ip so it's also very clear sport package source ip destination ip this one you may think uh, since we didn't print out anything like this in our pandora pi so it's from the pin command next we write an uh, optional data to the interface and report your observation So next bucket, uh, next requirement, how do we do it? We write anything to this interface and I try to show it up. So we can use a TCP dump to get it because we write, write an object data. So in this uh, template, 
would write actually data and I didn't type anything here. Okay, we need to uh, get rid of this part. You can write actually data in a while loop. That is a good idea to sleep for some time. Here, in, as in this uh, description, the first template, there is a sleep in the code. Here you can sleep, time about sleep, 10 seconds. When we write out something, or well, we may just write out once. It's all up to you. Instead of writing, write out a packet, we write out uh, actually uh, data. So let's, uh, again, we can use a trick, right? We can use this uh, SMP as a trick to write out something. You will receive a SMP packet, then we write out actually data. So we can delete this thing. Certainly it's okay you keep it here to work as indicator your program run to this place but however here I will write some actually stuff up data actually data you need to uh, as as uh, binary data I want to write out some actual data here. Let's just use this sentence as actual data. So certainly you can put anything you want. Can we paste here? Now I write out this uh, ARB data. Since it's already uh, created as a binary string, so I don't need to convert it to bytes. And we paste here. Can you ask, save it. Okay, now let's uh, run it. First, stop the previous one. Going to again in the background. Oops, again I have a problem in the indentation. So Ctrl C stop it. Oh, that's a tab. Use empty space. Converse, save it. Okay, it's running in the background. Now we also need to run TCP dump. Interface ETH zero. We have only one interface in on host here. Again, I was a run the background, but I want to supply all the error output. Run in the background and suppress all the error output. I press enter. Now we have two jobs, right? One is our turn dot by the other one is TCP dump. Then we can pin, just pin once. Let's see one. We check the output. Here, this output 
is uh, output from a ping command and zero received. This time there is no spoof packet written to the tongue interface, so zero received. However, we didn't get any output for TCP dump because TCP dump is uh, uh, sniffing on ETH zero, not on our last zero. So we need to change that one. Sniff on last zero. Let me clear, clear this uh, job too. Jobs uh, two is gone. Okay, now let's uh, run TCP dump to sniff on last zero. Dash I last zero. Here you need to use your last name. Dash N suppress the error output. Run in background. Okay, we have two jobs. Again, I want to ping it. Just ping once. Okay, now you see something new. We know this one is uh, this part is created is output by our tunnel zero. Right? This is uh, output by the ping command. Now you see something new here from this one to dot nine nine to dot five SMP echo request ID second number and length. This is output by the TCP dump here. Now you see it says so many bytes missing and from this uh, IP to this IP. So we know the first one is a pin request. What's this one? So this one is the, the random data, the object data I wrote to the time interface. And uh, since it's uh, treated as an IP packet, however, it's uh, just uh, uh, just some ra random data, but it's explained as an IP packet by our tongue interface. So you just get something like this. So many bytes missing. How do we analyze this uh, object data? We will need to know the IP packet format. For example, where does this IP address come from? You have a source, have a destination. From this source to this uh, destination. We know in the IP uh, header, the, the source IP address is located at uh, bad byte 12, right, from byte 12. So we can check that actual data from bad 12 and see whether we can get this number. The so object data here, you count from left to right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is this W. So which means this WRIT is, is explained as the source IP address. And this INGM space is explained as the destination address. It's our ask code, so we need to find the ask code of these uh, characters. For example, the WRIT, whether it's uh, ask code is this 114.105.116.105. We can use a uh, IP. Uh, uh, we can use Python. Uh, use uh, Python three to find. It. Okay, I want to uh, just uh, get that string. That string. to the writing for by empty space. There are eight calculus, eight bytes, eight bytes. 
the first four bytes is the source, the last four bytes is the destination. You can use ORD to find the S code of this calculator. String 0 is that W. So a quick way I would like to uh, write a for loop for a char inside this string. I print out expect string of length one but int found is already here C is treated as an integer. So we just print out C. Is treated as a number. Here you see 119114105116. You check the output here. 114105116105. That is the source IP, the destination IP here. 110103 Here I didn't print out all of them. One zero five one zero one zero three three two. Here this is. We have nine seven. One zero one zero three three two. Three two. Here, which means um, my counter just uh, one bat uh, run. Right here is from one one four. From one one four, which means when I count that is sentence from here. It will from this place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we are from this part like this. So this is uh, a right offset. A, you know A is uh, is ASCII code is uh, 97. Is this one, 97. So you can uh, do it again. Then print out right, this is right. This is a source, this is a destina destination. Now you see no matter what you write in the time interface is a treated as an IP packet. And uh, if it's a uh, you will get some legal output. If it's illegal, since it's random data, it's uh, very likely you just get some illegal data and you, you see some bytes missing. You can use the IP packet format to analyze each field, what the value it is. Then you, you will see whether it's legal or not. Since the arbitrary data, so you have high probability it's not legal. Right now, task uh, three send the IP package to the VPN server through a tunnel. In this task, 
we will put the IP packet receiving from client face into the UDP payload field of a new IP packet and send it out to another computer as we discussed during the lecture. So we need to, uh, to program a server program time server.py we run on the VPN server here is this uh, server again for this uh, server we print out some data here I print out packet source, packet destination, print out some information so we will have uh, have some hints about these uh, packets again the template server Return server dot pi. We run this one on the server, and uh, we are asked to implement the client program. Modify the time program. Rename it create time client dot pi. Again, we use a uh, UDP sockets to send the. Uh, Packs out, get a pack from the time interface and send out. Send packs via the tunnel. Then we are asked to test whether the tunnel is set up successfully or not. Okay, first let's implement the program. Is a server. Can A, can C. Let's quit this Python. And we post here on the S, save it. Saving file. Okay, so it's uh, saved. We create a UDP socket telegram. Now this IP A all zero means all the available uh, places on the server. First, you receive the packets from the UDP print out IP port number. Here there is a client IP client port number. This is the server IP and the server port number. For the data, it was a print out. We know in the IP in the VPN tunneling, VPN tunnel, the data is an IP packet, so we can. Uh, Get its information backcast into a SCAPI uh, IP packet format. 
find the source and the destination. So these are silver. Now the client. We need to implement the client. Task 2D. Now task 3. Implement the client. So we copy this in. So where do we put this line? The UDP socket in the client file. We copy our uh, turn dot pi. We rename it as turn client dot pi. Actually, I can make a copy. Open it. So where do we put other files? Or the other code? Here create a UDP socket. We can put a before we create the tongue interface or after the tongue interface does not matter. At this step both the socket and the tongue interface already. Then the wire loop. Ctrl C, copy it. You get a packet from the tongue interface and send the packet via the tunnel. So let's delete all these things. And we paste here. And the corner else save it. So right now we have the two uh, program. Replace the while loop in the program with the following server IP server port. Now should be replaced with actual IP address and port number. Server IP and server port. Here I have a server IP and a server port I didn't define it yet. We can put them here. The server IP and the server port. The server port is a nine zero nine zero. Let's save it. So we need to read this uh, description for anything we missed on the server part. It's just a standard UDP server program. And the cast the payload to an escape IP object and print out the destination IP address or the enclosed IP packet in the tunnel. Here for this one, okay, it uh, looks like we are modified all the required code. Now let's run it to test whether the tunnel works or not. Ping any IP address belongs to the private network. 
and let's see what's print out on the server. Okay, let's do it. We want to save it the code, so make sure you save it there. On the this on the server or the router, go to the volume fo folder. Turn server, make the executable. Then we run it. Okay, it's running, nothing printed out, so this is not a good idea. Good idea on the server program, you may add some uh, stuff. For example, here you add a server, here server, VPN server. Later you will know it's print out by this time server. Now on the client, on the host view, let's uh, kill these two, two jobs. They are all gone. Now we run this time first. Now this time we run that time client. Make the executable. And run it. Again, run it background. I have a syntax error. So this IP address, we need a double quotes to quote up. Turn client. Can I save it? And run it again. Okay, it's running. That's zero. Now I'm pinning host of V. Just pin it twice. This output by the pin command, nothing sharp. It will time out soon. Two packets transmitted. Now on the server, we got nothing. On the server, nothing. On the client, two packets transmitted. But we don't know where those packets are sent. Even server, nothing print out any packs belong to web here 53 not that uh, host uh, host uh, we right? we make a, a run target 53 53 this network is used by the VPN client and VPN server so let's pin it again, just twice. And right now this is uh, should be routed to the by to the zero right? to the time interface again. But we receive nothing because this uh, host does not exist. But on the server side, we got some information. You see it. From dot file, this random port number to this uh, 9090, this is a TCP, uh, this is a UT packet uh, from the client to the server, VPN server. And inside that UTP packet, the pin packet, you see it from my last zero, the time zero, to this dot file, non exist uh, uh, host. Again, another we I only send out two pin packets, right? And they are put inside the UDP data payload. 
Yeah, this is the inside pin request packet. And they put in the payload of those UDP packets and send from my client to the server. So what's problem on the server? Why? Well, it's now the tunnel worked because the IP packet is uh, put inside the UDP uh, payload and received by the server. Our ultimate goal is to access the hosts inside the private network, this one, using the tunnel. Let's pin host V. I already pinned it, right? And see where the ISMP packet is sent to VM server through the tunnel. No, we didn't see it. See it. Right? What was the problem? Because the loading, we didn't set it set up. And you saw the pro problem, so the pin package can be sent through the tunnel. This is done through loading. Package going to this uh, private network should be loaded to the tunnel interface and given to the tunnel client.py program. Use this uh, following command. Certainly, we can put the command in, in our. Uh, and client dot pi and this one okay we just uh, add an IP router add network D with interface my client interface is uh, is last zero right so yours, please choose, change it to yours. So I can type IP router add any uh, packs sent to the private network. They will be uh, routed to my time interface. And use IP router to show these routes. Yeah, this one it worked uh, by default when we send a pin. What is a virtual address used by the VPN server and the VPN client? This virtual network. Now this private network. This time, this packet will be reloaded to the last zero. So let's pin it. Pin host V. Nothing show up on the client. On the server side, here, the server side, we see four new lines. Right? And then there's a UDP packet. Inside the UDP packet, you see from the time my client time interface to this host V. To this host V. So it worked, but uh, we didn't get any reply yet. Right? Zero received. Two packets uh, transmitted and uh, went through the tunnel, go to the server, and the server received them and print out. Right, we pin the network. Pin host we in this uh, private network the ISMP packs are received by the server through the tunnel. This is a proof. This is output. This is a UDP tunnel, VPN tunnel, and this uh, packet went through the tunnel from the client to the server and the server printed out. Task four. Set up the VPN server. 
it needs to feed the package to the kernel so the kernel can load the package towards its uh, final destination and this should be done through a time interface just like what we did in task 2 so modify this one so it can uh, do the following create a time interface and configure it get the data from the SOC interface and treat the received data as an IP package and write the package to the time interface Here inside the router IP packet forwarding has already been enabled. You can check the dot compose file. If everything is set up properly, properly, you can ping host V from host U. And the SMP echo request packet should eventually arrive at host V through the tunnel and show your proof. And it uh, should be noted that all the host V will respond to the SMP package. The reply will not get back to host U because we have not set up everything yet. But we can use TCP dump or via shock to capture those uh, SMP reply packages. So here we need to uh, modify the server program with task 2 as as a template uh, task 2 we create and uh, configure time interface the server side currently we have is just a typical UDP server we need to create the time interface and uh, write any uh, IP packets we received from the tunnel, write them to the time interface we create for the server. Okay, now we can use this uh, as a template. The time server, we need all these uh, create an interface. Okay, we copy all this, get an interface name. Of time interface. So this part is for the UDP server. This part is for the time interface. Paste here, the time interface, create the time interface again. Use your last name, get the interface name, print out. Here, you may add a server since we run on the server, so it's, it's fine. Now, on the IP address on the server side, let's change the IP address to 11. Save it. Now we have this uh, interface, then in the while loop, we can write the packages we received. To the time interface, right? when we receive this uh, IP packet, print out, and we write it. Kind of we write this packet to the time interface. And as save it. Okay, this is a server side.
query time phrase configured gets data from the socking phrase, treat the received as IP packet, write the back to the time interface. Right, we configured here, create a here, create the time interface here, and config the time interface here. Then we get the data from the UDP tunnel. Then get the data as a IP packet and write the IP packet. Oops. Write the IP packet to the tunnel interface. So this is a tunnel server, the modified tunnel server. Before we run, we need to enable IP forwarding. This is already done for us. Now on the client, I want to uh, add that configure th the routing here, right? The routing I did on the client. This routing. Then I don't need to type it every time. Alright, start system. Search. Okay, this is the interface name. Now we complete both the server and the client. Then we can ping from host v. Ping host v from host u. And also we need to check that the package arrived at host v. So, which means we can run TCP dump at host way. So, let's uh, stop the previous uh, task. On the host yo here, is killed. Server, we also need to kind of see stop it. Now, this is uh, host V. Right? On host V, we didn't run anything. Now we want to run TCP dump on host V. That uh, interface, host V is interface uh, ETH0. Touch N. Suppress the error output. Press Enter. Okay, now it's uh, sniffing. On the server, right again. Interface less zero. Now on the client. Right in the background, again less zero. Press enter and run in the background now. Now we ping host uh, we. Let's see two. Let's just try to ping request. Again, we didn't receive any reply. On the server, I hear error. Line forty one. A bad object is a required, not IP. So on the server, there is a problem in the code. And the client is just uh, send out two packets because the server is uh, broke down. So certainly nothing will pass to this uh, host way. The server here, we need to convert this one bytes ok 
Can I save it? Right now, let's run on the server. Here on the server, you see that received a pin, one pin request, right? One pin request from the client to the server, and inside you see this uh, IP request to host we. Then it's uh, broken because it's uh, right. It's not right. Okay, it's running. We pin, send out two pin request again. Press enter. On the server, you see two happy packets pass through the tunnel. Now on the we, you see a request. Right? Two requests and two replies also generated. However, these two replies, they reply to this uh, 33.99. But it, uh, they are not uh, lodged to the timed face on the server, which means that they can they are not went through the tunnel and uh, go back to the client because we didn't set up the server routing yet. But we did prove that the packets go through the tunnel and uh, go to the host we and a host we also send back echo reply or the send back to echo reply right we use the tcp dump show that the smp packs have arrived at host we we want to see its a reply because we have not set up everything yet so the reply we are not get back to host your uh, task file handling traffic in both directions so we need to uh, monitor host interface and the so UDP socket like this so can time file descriptors have already been created this is a while loop and uh, you can use a code about to replace the while loop in your time client or server program. So you need to complete it and uh, test, test uh, pin and test uh, telnet. So we we'll use this code template. This part task file. And the while loop. So we we'll copy this part. Can you see? We need to modify both the turn server and the turn client. The while loop. Can you see? This is a turn server. Here we use this select. We will block at least one interface is ready. Uh, we have a soccer have a tongue to file this script. Here if I have the in ready for FD in ready if that uh, file this script is a sock what do we do? And if it's tongue what do we do? If it's uh, in the soccer which means we get a pack from the tunnel right? And print out. Then we need to write it to uh, the time interface. That's the time interface. We write this packet. Again, we need to convert to bytes. Now, if it's a turn, then we need 
uh, send to sock dot send to let me use a sock dot send to can you see can we where do we want to send this packet here the server you don't need to send it to the client right the client IP and the port so IP and the port here However, this IDP and port, we need to uh, define a global variable. Can you see IP and port? We can initialize it as a uh, here for the client. You type any number here is fine. number because they will be overwritten at this place there's a client IP and a port number and let's save it so the server send the packet received from the client face send back to the client now on the client we also need something similar to this server Here we need this sentence, right? Send the packs via the tunnel. Remember, use empty space here. Here we send the pack, not this uh, PKT. The PKT is an escapey object, so we need this packet. Now the client will send the packet read from the tunnel to the server. Uh, we define the server IP and the server port here. Get a read from the IP and the port. C certainly, this is the server IP and the server port. Right? The client will receive data from the server IP and the server port. We didn't use it. Certainly, you can write like the server style. Use this IP and this port. Yeah. Here, we write this uh, PKT. If you don't want to change it to bytes, you just use this data. You write data to this time. So this is okay. If the, you receive some data from the UDP, you get the payload, show it information, show its information because we know it's an IP packet. Then you write it to the time interface send it to the time interface so this is the client side okay, now let's uh, run these two program on the server side can you see stop it and then rerun it On the client side, we need to uh, get rid of this job. Terminate it. None. Run in background. Press enter. Okay, it's funny. Now we pin that. Uh, 
host we Did you see it? We get a reply. Now we received two packets, which means our tunnel worked as expected. And the server you see from socket from tan the socket is UDP socket from our VPN client to Here, this, this is to the host wheel. The nice, right? Because it print out those. Uh, here, you check the server code. It print out is the payload, which means is the IP packet in in the tunnel. I pack it in the tunnel, that's why you get this one. Right? From our uh, host uh, U to host V in the private network. Then in the time phase, you deploy from the host V to our host U. And here, on host V, you see two requests and also this reply or send back. Okay, we succeeded. The ping succeeded. We get a reply now. You need to print out how your packs flows. You want to see the flow, but if you want to see a detailed flow, we still need. As we discussed during the lecture, you can sniff on the virtual machine to get its detailed flow. Here is just uh, this flow just show the IP packet inside the tunnel. So another way, just like we did in task uh, four or three, you can print out. Here is uh, the packet inside the tunnel. You can also print out this IP and the port. Then you know the flow between these sockets, the UDP sockets. So how do we do it? So that way we show the flow. We don't need a we don't need to sniff with a TCP stamp or wire shock. So you can print out here. We have IP, we have port. This is the client. So we print out. This one from client to server So we need to put uh, uh, here. From IP port to the server. Server we have this uh, IPA and port, right? But we already know the server, so we can just type the server IP. Here with this uh, IPA and uh, port. Okay. 
Yes, save it. This is a UDP packet. Now for the client UDP packet. It from IP and port to the client. Here the client. The server IP and the server port to the client IP and the client port. So what the client IP and the client port? This is our client machine, right? We know the IP, and uh, but the port is a random port. How do we get that port number? So to make the simple, we just say to come to the host way. So if you want to get those number, we still need a sniffer. Certainly, you can use code to find them. Here, let's just type uh, an IP. Uh, client Can I save it? Okay, now let's rerun it. We will see your flow a little bit better. The client side, right? You see the from time from socket. So this is uh, from uh, here is is from socket, but it's the encapsulated uh, IP packet inside the UDP payload. So maybe we can say this from UDP, right? From UDP, this is a tunnel. UDP tunnel. And here it says from socket, but uh, it uh, says it is inside packet. The packet inside is the UDP. So you say it from socket. Uh, let's say uh, inside IP or encapsulated IP. So how do we write it? Maybe we write it like this. the inside IP, the IP inside the UDP tunnel. When I save it, here we can also, oops, on Z. When I save it, to the inside IP. Right now let's rerun it, you will see a better flow result. Here, this one. Run it again. The server side, can you see? Stop it and run it again. Okay, now let's pin it. Pin host way. Just twice. 
Right, you see reply from Pan from UDP here, this is from the UDP from the router to our client here there is a IP packet inside the tunnel is a form there is a reply message from host V to our host U this is printed out by the pin command so it is a little bit better on the server you can also see on UDP and the IP inside the UDP payload is this one here is from Pan again on the host V on host V you can see the package but to get a clear one clear one I think we need to sniff maybe it's better sniff on the server another way we can sniff on our client so we can sniff on our VPN client to get the uh, information but if we run the TCP dump and the background we have so many outputs you need to find uh, which one is printed out by TCP uh, TCP dump we know TCP dump you, we have something like this time stamp like time stamp So we can run TCP dump. We sniff uh, on the sniff on last zero. Surprise! Those error output. Not in background. Then you ping it. So you will see those uh, packets captured by TSP dump here. These are captured by the PC TSP dump echo reply. Right from this place, there are four packets. Request reply request reply right now let's uh, do a telnet command you probably will point out how your packs uh, flow. Let's try a uh, telnet command. Now, if we run the telnet here, then we have so many outputs. We are uh, mess up. So you can have a try to see something interesting. Everything messed together. Could you find uh, where your telnet? Telnet host we the protected uh, host then it will send out uh, TCP uh, packets but you will see lots of output mixed together I turn it towards that uh, server, you see something like this here. Then, what I need to type here. You need to find uh, that uh, which one is output by telnet. Ubuntu, this one, it looks like this one, output by telnet. Then I need to type a uh, uh, login. Here you see a login. You need to type the 
username, right? The username seed. So out this column. However, you have some other output. So you type seed. Yes. Again, you get various uh, stuff. We know every character we typed in the tenor it will echo back. So what is that my S I typed? When it echoed back. So we want to find it while it is the S I just typed the login. The S I just typed. So here it is. It's uh, quite hard to see it. I type E E D seed. E E Okay, it looks like some uh, error happening. Okay. Uh, if I type every character I should uh, you see connection closed by holding host. Hold it closed. Jobs, okay, to not running. Now, let's uh, here you see lots of packs passed on, passed by in the server. Now, I want to surprise those uh, outputs in my client. So, let's kill the TCP dump. Also, kill. Uh, Client. Now we don't want to see any output from town client. So town client because we only want it to set up a ton of us, right? So you can surprise what output and error output to the null device and run it in background. No, you see nothing. Even that uh, last zero, that output is also sent to the now device, but it's running. So we can run telnet now. Now it's clear, right? Join this one, connect to that one. Escape character is this one. Now login. Seed, press enter, password D E E S. Then we log it into our host way through the VPN tunnel. Have exit, quit it. You can see uh, lots of packets passed uh, back and forth in the server, the router. On this uh, host way, you also with the TCP dump, cap capture lots of packets. So, telnet is succeeded. Right? Now, task uh, 6 tunnel breaking experiment on host your telnet to host V while keeping the telnet connection alive. We break the VPN tunnel by stopping the client or the server program. Then type something in the telnet window. Do you see what you type? If it's, bro if it's broken, we will not see them. Because all we see is echo back from host V, from the telnet server. What happened to the TCP connection? We know TCP connection is a reliable connection, so the connection is still there. Which means the connection is not broken. The TCP connection is not broken. Now let's reconnect the Wi-Fi tunnel. Don't wait for too long because there are timeout mechanisms. We will run the telnet client server again, depending on which one you stop it and set up that time interface and routing. This is where you can find that including the configuration commands in the programs will make your life much easier. We already included them in our uh, Python code. We don't need to type them separately. Once the tunnel is re-established, what's going to happen to the tunnel connection? It will come back. Right? Before, 
the TCP connection timeout. Describe and explain your observation. Right, let's type a telnet. Right, just telnet to a uh, host V. Seed D E E S is connected. Can run command date. Right, I get a date. Okay, now let's break the tunnel by stop the server, the VPN server. Ctrl C, stop it. Then on the client, you type at want to type data again. D A T E, nothing show back. But uh, now let's uh, reconnect, run the server again. Then go back to the client. You see the DATE show up, right? Before I reconnect, I type DATE. Those DATE are actually, they are buffered. Now, once the tunnel is reconnected, they show up. We know TCP if uh, it does not receive Acknowledge it will keep resending those packets. And you can see this packet sent to the host V. So, which means everything comes back. You can press enter to see the connection is, uh, is going on. Okay, this is a uh, lab seven. We did all this. Now let's stop the environment. Can you see to stop the TCP dump on host V? Can you decrypt? This is VPN server, Ctrl C, stop it, Ctrl D, quit, Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D. Now, you see, when that telnet server, that host V, uh, created, and also the VPN server is, uh, Actually, it's still running, right? That uh, host V is still running, but uh, the tunnel is shut up. That's why now my telnet on host V is frozen here. So this is not a good idea. So what could we do? If you now we type anything, it just does not uh, respond. Connect D, connect C, it just does not respond. So. To shut down gracefully, we need to uh, go to the server router and run that VPN tunnel again. New tab, doc share, and you will see those commands I typed in my uh, tunnel client that we are send away. They will to that uh, host we so we need to run the VPN server. Okay, it's running now. You see the come back, right? It's breaking now. Now I can type exit. Connection closed by the following host because I typed uh, exit log out. But uh, so actually, why you didn't see the exit? Because uh, before I typed a control C, control D, those kind of command and uh, send it to the following host. And the control D is uh, quit. So that was 
closed by the host. And I type exit later, that's why you didn't see uh, exit. Okay, now we disconnect this uh, telnet and control D to quit this uh, client. Now for the server, we can stop it. VPN server, control C, stop it. And control D, quit it. Control D, quit it. Okay, now we can run DC down. to shut down these containers. Corner D, okay, they are shut down. Corner D, corner D, okay, everything's done.